Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, Optimal Health Associates, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. May 24th, 2021, COVID update and update in general about where we are. So I'm not posting again as often because I'm trying to let things die down as I'm feeling more comfortable with everything. I think it's important that we don't message as much. But sometimes I'll be messaging a little more because I think, again, the misinformation is increasing. And for those of you who don't or get upset with me for saying that, it's not to be a contrarian. It's just what it is. If you don't want to listen to it, you don't have to. So anyway, the good news is we're under 30,000 cases in the United States. As I've talked about, I thought Oklahoma would be immune in April, probably the rest of the country by around May, mid-May, end of May, and I think that's where we're on target for. Um, the rest of the world has not had the vaccine accessibility we have, and so you look at places like Japan, um, uptick in cases which could affect the Olympics. India still has lots of trouble, and really there's a lot of Middle Eastern countries having a lot of trouble, but again, it doesn't make the news. It gets kind of lost in the shuffle. But the good news is in the United States, COVID is over, essentially. It's going to be pretty much gone, I'm sorry, in another month. Um, will there be sporadic infections? Yes, just like any virus, but the pandemic's over. So let's talk about some concepts. So if you haven't gotten the vaccine, I, do I think you should get the vaccine? If you're someone at risk, yes. If you're an adult, yes, relatively. You know, if you're a younger person who's super healthy, works out, eats right, takes vitamins, I don't know, younger, I mean, in your 20s, but um, I think anyone over 30 should definitely take it just because we never know. But again, there's cross protection, it looks like, from measles, mumps, rubella. There's cross protection from that vaccine from tetanus. So go get those in the meantime if you're debating it. I mean, everyone's been exposed to the opportunity to have the vaccine. So now it's just a matter of are you going to do it or you're not going to do it. So in the meantime, if you haven't done it, just get your tetanus cut up because you never know when you're going to step on a rusty nail. And that should include your pertussis and diphtheria. And you need to think about pertussis because it's back in the country too. It has been for a while. Um, measles, mumps, rubella is always good for younger people because they're potentially going to get pregnant if they're girls or if they're boys and they're the father of a baby. They may be around uh, a pregnant mom uh, too. So let's think about keeping those updated. Uh, when we look at the, I don't want to say the nonsense, but the nonsense about pushing pediatric vaccines, which puts me at, uh, COVID, for COVID, puts me at odds with a lot of people. There's no science supporting safety. There's no science supporting safety. Anyone who's advocating for them is ignoring the biggest issue with the vaccine. We don't know what the long-term safety is going to be. The data this weekend started illustrating the potential for cardio, my, or uh, inflammation of the heart um, that can happen just with viruses but you know it's not the virus that's causing the inflammation of the heart directly it's the immune response to the virus and it looks like that may be happening with the vaccine now that data is still new we don't know for sure but it's definitely a concern and again that makes sense and, and the thing I'd point out since the overall risk of the virus to people who are healthy low-risk kids is minuscule to non-existent, it's, but it's minuscule at the worst. Why expose them to a vaccine we don't know about? Face of safety. If we knew it was totally safe, I'd be on board with it, but we don't know it's safe. We know kids don't spread it. That's been documented now across the world, literature, kids under 14. Why do it? I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. It will never make sense to me to mandate a vaccine or tell everyone to get a vaccine that we don't even know if it's safe. It's stupid. But, you know, everything we've done with COVID has been fairly stupid, excluding the vaccine development that we did get done. But applying it to everyone doesn't make sense. You get your kid the meningococcal vaccine at 12. No, you wait till they're going to college. Why would you give the COVID vaccine when they're a minor and we know it doesn't matter? But I've talked about that. So other things, new data coming out uh, from the intelligence side that, you know, three Wuhan uh Virology lab workers were admitted um, in the first week of November, roughly, with COVID-type symptoms and ventilation, I guess, essentially, is what I've been reading. Uh, again, they didn't have COVID tests then, so they couldn't do the COVID test. And believe me, they're not going to go back and look at any swabs they got then to see if there's COVID on them because they do not want that data coming out. 
it is gets back to Occam's razor, uh, that simple explanations sometimes do apply. That's an over over simplification of that. But the bottom line is a simple ex explanation often is going to be true. Not always, but often. Let's see. We have three Wuhan scientists or work, si workers at the virology lab with documented se severe significant viral infection in the first week of November. We from, know from prior intelligence intercepts that something was going on right there at that time. <laughs> I, mean, at, I, I don't know what to say. And we know the Chinese have lied the whole time. The Chinese government, not the Chinese people, but there's a lot of people who are Chinese in the Chinese government. So, you know, hey, the Chinese government lied. So, you know, that, that isn't a saying, don't be mean to Chinese people anywhere, but the Chinese government is a problem and the truth will never truly be out. But the documentation is there that it's certainly the most definitive circumstantial case in the history of the planet. Because I'm telling you right now, a green monkey did with HIV, didn't have sex with a bat that was 700 miles away, and then somehow get SARS started, SARS-2, and given it and gave it to something, a, co, a, a civet or some whatever that is in the, the Wuhan market. Likewise, there is still today, and Scott Gottlieb, the former FDA commissioner said, with MERS and SARS, they could trace it to an animal and say, this animal gave us this, this one, that one. Can they do that with, with COVID? No. I mean, they've had nine, eight, 18, 19 months to do that. They can't find an animal source. They can theorize this thing happened or that. There is no documentation of an animal source. That's very, and that's documented. So again, people ask, why does this matter? Because the lies matter and having people lie all the time about this just drives me nuts. So that's the bottom line though is A, some data showing pediatric people getting the vaccine or having heart inflammation. It's an experimental vaccine. I wouldn't do it for peds. Two, uh, if you're not a pediatric person or a young person that's super healthy, um, get the vaccine. Three, if you're not wanting to get the vaccine, at least get your tetanus and your MMR caught up. That's always good for you anyway. Four, we need normalization. So again, tell people we're wearing masks, we've been vaccinated. You don't need to wear a mask. The CDC has documented that data. We don't need to do it. What am I missing, Kim? <laughs> Not the dog. I don't know. I had, I, there's some questions. I think you kind of addressed a lot of them. I guess there was something wrong with the last video only on YouTube, but a bunch oh. of people commented on it. So it, Sorry. it's apparently working on Facebook, but um, let's see. People want to know... How come the natural immunity, if you've had COVID, why isn't that discussed? It's not. Okay, so the question is, do you have long-term immunity if you, get the, if you get COVID? And the answer is yes. Okay, it's documented. Dr. Andrew Redd, R-E-D-D, -D, documented that March 30th in a paper. You have long T, you have T cell immunity. There's other papers with B cell immunity. They won't discuss it because it goes against the narrative. If you've been definitively infected, you had a positive PCR, you had all the symptoms you have immunity and you have immunity against all the current variants. It is what it is. They won't discuss it because they don't want you to know the truth. They don't want anything against their narrative. They lie all the time. The government, the FDA, this NIH, this is going to get pulled, but it's how it is. They lie. So now and then a scientist like Andrew Redd will publish something out of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease and it somehow gets through and it shows that everything that Fauci's been saying is incorrect. But that's okay because there's still scientists who try. But the bottom line is they don't talk about immunity from prior from the infection because they don't want you to know it. So if you do have the antibodies and you've also had, I know you're not supposed to call it exosomes. Okay. You've had the nanoparticles. Of so Kim's asking about exosomes or is a scientific term, but now it's a big pharma term as defined by the FDA. So you've, if you've received a, the, a minimally manip manipulated stem cell product that contains nanoparticles, cytokines, and growth factors that facilitate cell-to-cell -cell healing and communication as a treatment or as a opportunity for COVID recovery, what's the question? 
do you still suggest getting a vaccine? I, well, one, if someone did that, I wouldn't want them to get vaccinated for at least months and months and months after their, um, they were fully recovered because all that's gonna happen is the COVID's gonna, um, the, the COVID vaccine's gonna reinstitute their symptoms. Number two, this is, I'm losing track a little bit. Would I do what? <laughs> if they had the treatment. So this is a stem cell derivative therapy. And also- That's been, hold on, hold on. Stem cell derivative therapies have been used all throughout um, Asia and some European countries to treat post-COVID symptoms and active COVID. So it is what it is. There was a trial that was done in the United States that showed good efficacy for active COVID, but it was a, what we call an IRB trial, investigation review trial for that uh, treatment strategy. I think it showed 91% efficacy for severely affected COVID patients. Be that as it may. So if you got those, and you got it, and they made you better. Would you get the COVID vaccine? In my opinion, a you don't need the COVID vaccine anyway because you got sick enough from COVID. We know that you have antibodies. Number two, I would wait on the vaccine till you have to do it. Okay. Um, what about the place that where they were showing in the hospital the dogs? And oh my the god! So, okay. So again. COVID is a virus. It came from birds. Well, here, say what I was saying. Or are you going to repeat the question? Because Oh, the question is the dog, the dog variants. Okay. So where did COVID come from originally or coronaviruses? Birds, chickens, birds. These viruses float between mammals and avians. Okay. It's, you know how it is. So there's changes. So again, when we talked about months and months ago, the minks in Norway got it, they got some variants, so they killed 11 million minks, the variant didn't matter. Did the people in Utah where there's tons of mink farms do that too? Did they Did they have the variant? Yes, did they end up killing all their minks? No, and because they were smarter or they weren't as reactionary. So it didn't matter, the mink variant didn't matter. There's no variants that matter, okay, for 99.999% of us. So the bottom line is, don't get Twitter paid about dogs getting it or cats. They've been getting it the whole time. They have been. Probably gerbils, hamsters, any familial pet type situation, those animals, if they are in a family where there was COVID, they got it. <laughs> it's okay. But there has not been some sudden at this point, we're 18 months in, 19 months in, there isn't like some huge vector of dog COVID going to humans and killing lots of people. It isn't happening. So just blow this stuff off, okay? The, the virus is ubiquitous in the environment, meaning it has been everywhere. It's infected everything it can infect. We have the versions of it we're gonna have. Are there gonna be more versions? Yes. Are some of them potentially at risk for causing problems? Yes. But if you've had the virus or you've been vaccinated, you're in pretty darn good shape as documented by the CDC data. Okay. And then you've talked about kid, like younger kids in the vaccine. This person specifically asking with kids, should you be more scared of them potentially getting the long hauler problems with COVID or vaccine risks? I would be much more concerned about vaccine risks than I ever would be about long hauler syndrome in kids because there's essentially a scant number of that reported. I mean, we know when we give vaccines to people, there's going to be damage. It just is it you. And so are we willing for the greater good to promote the idea of vaccines for people? And the answer is yes, that is public health policy. But the overall risks need to be small and the benefits need to be large. And the problem with the COVID vaccine for kids is the benefits aren't there. I mean, vaccinating a million kids to prevent, you know, one death or five deaths when you know there's we don't know anything about it isn't helpful how about just putting everyone on vitamin d in a multi sorry I mean, it's just i mean that's safer it's about safety with vaccines we don't know if they're safe okay um this person is high risk doesn't say why just high risk and vaccinated since they're high risk should they still wear a mask no, you're immune. That's the whole point. 
you have a 99.9991 effective immunity rate against death. You have a 99.999 against serious illness. So you're done. If you're really worried about your immune system, go call, if you're in Oklahoma City, call Amy Darter's office, Dr. Amy Darter. She can see if you're immune. It's that simple. Dr. Amy Darter, immunologist and allergist, but she's an immunologist too and is a functional immunologist, meaning she actually has a clue and knows what she's doing. And she's a smart lady. So she can answer this question for you, Dr. Amy Darter in Edmond. So if you're worried about your immunity status after the vaccine or after the infection, call her office and she has the machine and the knowledge and the technology. She has the whole kit and caboodle in one place. That's it. So anyway, thanks to everyone for listening. Um, if this gets pulled, because I was highly critical of the FDA and NIH again, who cares? Uh, but good night. Take care.